How to be more sociable. The first thing you could do to be more sociable <clears throat> is not eat a vegan fig tart when you're doing videos on how to be sociable, but Jen made it, and what a sociable guy I am, participate in this social activity. Mmm, fellow human, good work on the path. I struggle with sociability. I'm a stand-up comedian, I'm an only child, I'm a solitary guy. Until I became a father and a husband, I didn't really know how to do that. It was a difficult thing for me in relationships when I um, had a partner who was more sociable than me. Um, I must say, it helps me to realise the significance of compatibility in relationships. Being with someone who you have a similar vision to of how life should be, how you're going to set your life up, the kind of stuff you're going to do, the way you're going to raise kids, the way that a house has to be kept and what your roles are within that. Great. It doesn't need to conform to any particular tradition or convention as long as it works for both of you and it's happy and nutritious. As for the sociability thing, I don't like to socialise too much. I guess it, perhaps my egotism and um, self-obsession find it sort of gets a bit caught up in that. Oh, what's this person thinking? What do I? How do I handle that? But now, but if you do need to socialise, these are the techniques that I've been given that have made it easier. One. Think about other people. Don't think about yourself anymore. Even shyness can be a kind of inversion of egotism. What I've tried to do in social situations is stay very, very present and listen to the people that I'm dealing with. What are they saying? What do they want? Is there some way that I can be useful to them? And to let go of the idea that I can get some sort of approval from the situation. Like, oh my God, if that person likes me, maybe they'll <laughs> let me use their caravan. I don't, I try to let go of uh, objectives of that nature. So as well, that what that stops me from doing is being overly pushy. Don't you sometimes in a social situation get caught up in some micro drama of the evening of whether or not you're being dominant enough or you probably won't notice if you're being too dominant because it means you're sort of your egoic flow is all about being overt and expressive. It's more the people, and I'm guessing you're the kind of people that are going to need a video of this nature, people that tend to be introverted. Now, in spite of the fact that I'm a performer for a living, I am basically an introvert, like many people that are show-offs for a job. I like to be generally with people that I know well in small groups. I tell you how small, me. That's how small, or me and my missus, or me and my kids. I, yeah, but when I do socialise, what I try to do is I try to think, this is why, in a sense, a spiritual path is a helpful thing, because it gives you a kind of a conduit and a means of understanding and dealing with pretty much any situation. Basic principles such as surrender, acceptance, gratitude, service, thinking about how you can be useful to other people, all these tools come into play, these ideological or behavioural tools come into play when you find yourself suddenly fretting and sweating in a situation. Also what's good for me is because I'm in a, <clears throat> excuse me, happy relationship, I, when we do socialise, and my wife is pretty cool because she will like, she will go, do you want to come this thing? I don't care if you come or if you, if you don't come, if you don't want to, and I'll go, oh cool, yeah, no, I won't come then. I only come if she goes, you got to come this thing, then I'll go. And then what may happen is like, uh, we'll, I'll observe things and we can chat about that later. It's a bit weird when that happens. What do you think that person? I love psychological analysis, don't you? Don't you guys think, oh, that's interesting the way they behave. What did they mean when they done that? I love a little bit of that stuff. It can be fuel for the marriage. We had a beautiful thing quite recently where some people were uh, like, I, I live near a place where people camp and caravan and we hung with those people that were caravanning and I thought how beautiful it was to socialise with them. They had nightly fires and it felt like an echo of the way that we evolved to live in tribal communities, connected to nature, connected to one another, intergenerational, not just peers, people young and old and kids all hanging together. My little children playing with kids that were slightly older. It was very, very beautiful. It made me realise you've got nothing to prove. You've got nothing to gain. See, what I suppose you should do if you find socialising difficult is find out what is it it brings up in you. For me, I suppose, the challenges were, oh, I feel inferior, I feel inadequate, I feel I should be doing more, saying more, be more in general. Since recognising those challenges and dealing with them outside of socialising, when I am called upon to socialise, I find it easier. There is a natural monasticism to some of us, a natural tendency to want to uh, move towards hermitude and reflection and isolation, but we are it is said, social creatures. So when we have opportunities to feast or to hang or to attend festivals, in, I suppose it's less of a problem now, isn't it? Now that we have these two metre restricted and masked gatherings, 
Well, I suppose when we are called upon to do it, I suppose it's good to look at what is it it brings up? Do you not feel good enough? Do you feel like you're lonely or you're going to say something embarrassing? Watch those things. Watch those things and know that you are enough. And know that the problems that you do feel in yourself can never be resolved in these kind of situations anyway. That if you bring your focus to being of service and to helping other people, these situations pass a lot more easily. Now, why don't you enjoy a little bit of fig pie, vegan fig pie at that, and think about just how jolly nice I am. Cheers, Her Majesty.